In this video, we explain the concept of phosphorescence. Phosphorescence is an emission spectroscopy, uh, uh, pretty much like uh, fluorescence, okay, but it differs from fluorescence in a variety of uh, aspects. Uh, two of the more important differences with uh, fluorescence is that phosphorescence happens at much longer time scales than fluorescence. Fluorescence is much faster than phosphorescence. And the other uh, significant difference is that uh, phosphorescence uh, usually involves photons that have lower en energy or longer, longer wavelength than the fluorescent uh, photons. All right, so let's try to uh, explain what phosphorescence is. Before actually starting to explain uh, the process of phosphorescence, we need to introduce the concept of a singlet electronic energy state and a triplet electronic energy state. Okay, we're going to start with a very simple molecular orbital diagram that is going to have a sigma and a pi bonding orbital and a, a pi star and a sigma star antibonding orbital. Okay, so uh, this is your, going to be your uh, model uh, MO diagram. And uh, we call this state a singlet, electronic state, because in this state, uh, all of the spins are paired. Okay, and that means that, that we call it state singlet. All right, uh, then uh, we can promote an electron from the low energy state to uh, the high energy state. Okay, the lowest energy transition in this case uh, would result in something like this, pi star and then sigma star. Okay, so if we uh, promote that electron, then uh, this will be our excited state. Now, this is also a singlet excited state because all of the electrons are paired. Uh, right, so this is a singlet ground state. That's a singlet excited state. And uh, what is a triplet excited state? A triplet excited state would be that in which um, uh, this electron is actually pointing in the same direction as that one. Right? So you can imagine how um, you might have an excited state that looks like this. Okay? That would be a triplet excited state. Right, we know that when we are doing UV absorption, the spin selection rule forces us to go from that state to that state. Going directly from this state to that state through the absorption of photon is forbidden okay, from the spin selection rule. Okay, but then under some circumstances, it turns out that you can actually reach this state from that one, and that is something necessary for uh, phosphorescence. All right, so now that we have a clear understanding of what a singlet uh, uh, state is and a triplet state is, Okay, we can actually then draw a set of uh, energy states that are going to be uh, singlet and triplet. All right, so uh, now we're going to uh, redraw this uh, diagram, but, but only drawing the energy of the uh, overall electronic configuration. Okay, I'm going to call this the uh, singlet ground state, so S of naught, and here you will have vibrational states. Okay, and then we're going to have a singlet excited state, okay, which would correspond to the... Um, electronic configuration that we have drawn as a singlet excited state and under, under some conditions, some uh, very special molecules, this happens very rarely, okay, uh, some molecules actually have a triplet excited state that lies a little bit lower in energy than the singlet excited state. Okay, again, this is rare, but in some molecules this does occur. Right, so then let's see um, how do we explain here fluorescence and how it, uh, uh, or phosphorescence, and how it differs from fluorescence. Right, so the system is going to start always at the ground uh, electronic state and the ground vibrational state. And then after a photon absorption, controlled by the frank condom principle, okay, you might reach the singlet electronic state okay, and some vibrational, some vibrational uh, excited state in the singlet uh, electronic state. All right, so that is what we call absorption, and again, this requires a photon. That is your UV spectroscopy. Now the next thing that happens is that these relax very fast. Okay, that's vibrational relaxation. This usually has time, uh, time scales of 10 to the minus 12 seconds. That is a typical uh, uh, time scale for that vibrational relaxation. Now, if the system returns up to the ground state, uh, emitting a photon, that's what we'll call fluorescence. Okay, and we've already studied this. Again, the system may return uh, to the ground state. Okay, we're going to say that it arrives at that vibrational state, emitting a photon. Okay, that will be fluorescence. And the time scale for this process is about 10 to the minus 9 seconds, more or less. Okay? 
Uh, the system uh, might also relax from the excited state through collisions with the medium, and then uh, no photons will be emitted, or maybe it will react uh, uh, because the excited states tend to be more reactive than ground states and so forth. Okay? But again, in some uh, special cases, under some circumstances, what actually happens is that sometimes when the system gets to this singlet excited state, instead of actually uh, going to the ground state and emitting a photon through uh, fluorescence, okay, there's something that we call an intersystem crossing. Okay, the spin uh, uh, of the electron excited state flips to go from a singlet to a triplet. Now, the mechanism for this intersystem crossing going from singlet to triplet is something that is under current investigation, and it usually really requires quite complicated mechanisms uh, involving metal, metal centers. Okay, uh, we're not going to focus on how this uh, uh, singlet to triplet intersystem crossing takes place, but it's not something necessary. Uh, uh, in order to obtain phosphorescence. Okay, so we call this intersystem crossing, and it's a process that does not involve any photons. Okay, in this diagram, straight lines mean uh, radiative processes, processes that involve photons, and the curved lines are those that do not involve photons, they will be radiationless processes. Okay, so during this intersystem crossing, uh, you, you read a vibrational excited state in your triplet excited state. I notice that because this uh, triplet state uh, lies a little bit below in energy from, uh, with respect to the singlet, okay, you can still lose a little bit of energy through vibrational relaxation. Okay? And now you are in the uh, ground vibrational state of the excited triplet state. Right? And uh, you can now lose some of the energy to uh, uh, lose the, the energy to return to the ground state, and there's various mechanisms for that. One of them is that you lose that uh, excited state through uh, perhaps reactions, or maybe you dump the energy as uh, thermal energy to the solvents, but under some circumstances it actually happens that you can uh, go back to the ground state emitting a photon, okay? And that's what we would call phosphorescence, okay? So uh, you would return to this ground state, and that photon, okay, H nu, this will be a phosphorescent photon. Phosphorescence. Phosphorescence. All right, so uh, something that is very important is that the time scale of this phosphorescence process, uh, it varies, but it's much, much slower uh, if these are seconds. Okay? Uh, it's, uh, it's about a million times to perhaps uh, uh, even, even greater than that uh, than fluorescence. And the question is, why is that so slow? The idea here is that uh, this process where you go from a triplet to a singlet requires an electron flip, right? So if you have your two electrons uh, pointing in the same direction, okay, when you return to the singlet excited state, there has to be a flip in the spin. And that is something that violates the spin selection rule. Okay, so uh, uh, in principle, what we would expect is that if something violates the selection rule, it would never happen. In reality, what happens is that, well, uh, you can still uh, uh, carry out the process that is uh, spin forbidden, but it's going to take a long, long time for it to, uh, to, to happen. Again, notice that how fluorescence, where this uh, is a spin-allowed process, takes place in, you know, a reasonable time scale would be one nanosecond. Okay, phosphorescence, which is spin-forbidden, uh, takes place about a million to, uh, or perhaps a billion times uh, a longer time scale. It's much, much uh, slower because, again, it violates the spin selection rule. Okay, the other thing that is different from uh, fluorescence, uh, when we talk about phosphorescence, is that the energy of this photon that you're emitted you emit in, it actually tends to be a little bit uh, smaller than the energy of the fluorescent photon. And we can actually justify that uh, from the following. Right? Notice that because the uh, triplet state lies a little bit below in energy than uh, the singlet state, okay, uh, when you undergo this vibrational relaxation, you're actually losing this energy where th that you cannot lose in the fluorescent process. Right? So that loss of energy through vibrational relaxation Okay, means that the energy that you actually have to uh, when you return to the ground state has to be lower than what you actually have in your fluorescence. Okay, so uh, phosphorescence is not nearly as common as fluorescence, uh, uh, but it's uh, interesting and, and um, uh, it, it, it has to do with uh, uh, you know, the, the flip of the spin. Okay, it's a spin uh, forbidden process. Okay, that justifies the uh, very long time scale, and we've also explained why uh, phosphorescent photons tend to be. Uh, lower energy than fluorescent photons.